The debate over Israel's contentious judicial reforms has now reached the country's top court. And with this, the protesters are also back on the streets. Massive crowds continue to converge for protest marches. Before the hearing, protesters also occupied the area around the country's Supreme Court. Many are camping outside the courthouse itself. Chants, sloganeering and agitation continued outside the court's premises on Tuesday. As the court heard a combination of eight petitions against the first part of judicial reforms for over 13 hours. The historic hearing over an amendment to the reasonableness clause saw all 15 Supreme Court judges sitting together for the first time. The courtroom was filled to capacity. A mix of lawyers and politicians, including the German ambassador to Israel, were present in the courtroom. The hearing was also live streamed. Democracy does not die with a few major blows, but rather with many small steps, Israeli Supreme Court Judge Isaac Amit said during the hearing. The court eventually decided to give the lawyers in court 21 days to add to their argument. Kicking off the government's defence of its legislation was attorney Yitzhak Bart. He argued that determining whether a bill was unreasonable, or what is known as the reasonableness clause, was too vague and liable for abuse. Kicking off the government's defence of its legislation was the attorney Bart. He argued that determining whether a bill was unreasonable was too vague and the Israeli government did away with the clause restricting the court's ability to overturn some government decisions by deeming them unreasonable. Although other tools for voiding executive decisions remain in place, opponents say the amendment removes a vital democratic oversight mechanism. The final verdict, however, is not expected for weeks or even months. The government, on its part, says through the reforms it aims to stop politically, political overreach by unelected judges. Far-right lawmakers Simcha Rothman, who is also the head of Parliament's Law Committee, criticised the hearing. He questioned the need of a legal procedure or ruling that will harm the soul of democracy. Critics say the judicial reforms proposed by the right-wing coalition in Israel is the first step towards dictatorship. The crisis has split Israeli society, prompting months of mass demonstrations. The tussle over the contentious reforms has been raging for months together now. The United States and other Western allies have also voiced concern about the detrimental impact of the judicial changes on Israel's democracy. Talking about the US, Israeli PM Netanyahu is set to visit the country later this month to attend the UN General Assembly meet. He's also expected to meet President Joe Biden in New York on the sidelines of the UNGA. Experts see it as a potential downgrade in Israel's relations as the meeting is not taking place at the White House. Well, for more on this earlier, we asked our correspondent, Geordie Cohen, with the meeting not taking place in the White House, how is this being seen in Israel and how an Oval Office meeting for Netanyahu reliant on how things will play out with these judicial reforms? Listen in. So this meeting between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu that's taking place at the UN General Assembly in New York and not in the White House in Washington is being seen as a lower profile meeting. Now, opponents of Netanyahu are suggesting that this is proof that he's damaging the US-Israel relationship. However, Netanyahu's supporters are saying that intelligence and security cooperation are at an all-time high and Biden's detractors are asking why it's taken him so long to plan this meeting. Now the Biden administration took seven months to agree to a meeting with Netanyahu. That's because of frustration commentators are suggesting over issues like judicial reform and on the settlements. Commentators are also suggesting that perhaps the administration is being mindful of progressive voters with an election coming up and also potentially of the optics if there was a a meeting in the White House and potentially you could see thousands of Israelis and American Jews protesting outside the White House on the issue of judicial reform. So we're hearing that there is expected to be a follow-up meeting at the White House later on in the year. Um, a senior US official 
has suggested to US media that this could be dependent on how it all plays out with the judicial reform. Now, remember, on Tuesday, the Supreme Court began their hearings on petitions against the reasonableness law, and that could take weeks or even months for them to reach their ruling. Now, the government is suggesting that the Supreme Court doesn't have the authority to even hold those hearings and to rule on this issue. They say that's because the reasonableness law was passed as an amendment to a basic law which holds quasi constitutional status. And no one knows if the government will abide by the Supreme Court ruling if it strikes the law down. But what we do know is that in the meeting between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu in New York, they're likely to discuss the issue of judicial reform. Also, they're likely to discuss the Palestinians. The new India Middle East Europe corridor that was announced at the G20 and also the issue of potential normalization between Israel and Saudi Arabia.